If the tree is not unified, there cannot be fruit. We have an old plum tree at the Johnsons. Something is still unified in that old dead looking plum tree because it still produces delicious plums. But you should look at it, it looks dead. I mean dead. <coughs> but it produces because there's something still in unity in it. So they carry a double amount of water storing it both above and below ground and have the ability to reach down deep and find water. Now what the palm tree is signifying to us in this illustration is what we studied about a, a week or two ago. You remember the fish pools of Heshbon? I just mentioned it just a minute ago. All right, how did I say, and Eric will probably remember this, what is the first step for, for the fish pool? Go ahead. You have to dig. Now what does that represent spiritually? You're digging out the earth. What does the earth represent in sin. spiritual the sense? Sin. The world, sin. So the first thing God has to do before you can have fish in your fish pool is he has to dig out your flesh. You have to repent. You have to get rid of the things that are holding you back. What is the next thing he does in the fish pools of Heshbon? Yes, he lays the, they lay the stones. And then the next thing is the mortar. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, the reason these fish pools were so well developed is because of the cement. It's diligence. Diligence. Someone say it with me. Diligence. The mortar represents diligence because you can have the hold up, you can have the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit, but if you're not diligent in your prayer life, if you're not diligent in the Word, if you're not diligent in your seeking of God, if you're not diligent, the water's going to get dirty. There's nothing harder, I think, to keep clean than a fish tank. So, have, you have one? Yeah, a bunch of them. Okay, so where is the fish pool in, in uh, the illustration of the palm tree? Where would it be represented at? Where would the fish pool be? Would it be on the bark? <coughs> would it be up with the fruit? It would be at the roots. So she's got the root system to bring people to the Lord, to have people come to the Lord. Her root system is her humility and her depth in God. That enables her to have water in the fish pools because they're represented at the root system of the tree. He's going back over again her ability to be fruitful. And then at the top, of course, it's easy because it has to do with the, with the, uh, with the fruit that's up at the top. They had the Feast of Tabernacles. What did they do at that feast? They built the booths. Yes. And what did the booths illustrate? The tents they wandered in. The wandering in the desert and the wilderness. <clears throat> God never wants you to forget where you came from. He never wants you to forget the journey. He never wants you to forget your days in the desert. <clears throat> because it's in the desert that God has proved himself to you in miraculous ways. Amen. Amen. And the power when Jesus came through the city, they took the palm branches. And what did they say? Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he. Why were they so blessed that he was coming? Because their days of wilderness in separation from God was over. Jesus had come, Emmanuel. God with us. Hallelujah. So
And this is what the matriarchs, uh, most of them were barren. And, not able, and they were just, it didn't matter how much they loved their husbands, they wanted children. The bride wants the fruit, and she's willing to yeah. work to get the fruit. She's willing to go up the tree and get the fruit until she learned how to be the bride. And then others would, could come along and go up that tree and get the fruit from the words of her mouth. I tell you, there's, a, there's such a lack of desire for more of God. Nobody's hungry enough to really reach. Nobody's hungry enough to sacrifice. Nobody's hungry enough to climb up the tree. It's right there in front of us, but we're not hungry enough to climb up the tree. Amen. We're too well fed on the world. Mm. Someone say amen. Amen. If you want to enjoy this fruit, you have to climb high to obtain it. You have to go low to get a fish pool going. You've got to go high in order to reach the maturity of the height of being a palm tree. This is a climb of obedience and working hard against all opposition to obtain this honor. Honey, you don't know opposition till you start to climb. Do you start to go on the heights. You don't know what opposition is until you reach the forces of darkness that come against you. Because the devil knows if you reach the top of that palm tree, if you begin to be that palm tree and promote the growth of fruit, then it's going to draw people to that fish pond. The devil knows that and opposition is going to come against you. Amen. And then he says a beautiful thing. Oh, I think it's, I keep doing that. I have both verses on here. I said I will go up to the palm trees. Now this is him talking. And I will take hold of the boughs thereof. This is such a beautiful truth. I want him to take hold of me. I don't want to be independent. Yeah. She can taste it and know mm. 
what he was saying as Hallelujah. he directed her. Hallelujah. Her taste for his will was like the best wine. She receives what he gives her. Listen, most of us puke it out before we even get it chewed down. But the bride of Jesus wants his word. She sits under that apple tree. She will not be moved. Someone say, I will not be moved. I will not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I'm going to sit here under this apple tree. I'm going to listen and watch. And I'm going to look up at that cross until I get every nugget out of it. Do you know that where you were brought up at the cross, where you were raised at the cross, we're going to say, see that in the next verse. Or two, but at that cross is where you learn what it was like to be his. You learn the cost of buying yourself that he spent to buy for Arise from 
the dead, and Christ will give you light. I can't say enough about the sleeping church because this, I believe that we are in that fulfillment that the Bible talks about. The Laodicean church who was fast asleep. Now, he's been talking about her, uh, you know, all these beautiful things we had last week. And then she turns to him and she's like, wow, you see all this in me? I tell you, I say that all the time. Lord, I don't see these things in myself. I, I, I don't see what you would desire me for. Amen. I don't see what you would love me for. I, all I see is my faults, my failures, mm. my lack of passion, mm. my lack of desire. But he, but he has put a yes in us. Hallelujah. He has put something in us that goes beyond the person that maybe you see with that is lacking passion. There's something in you that you can't stop. You can't quit. She says, "Oh, I know, Jesus. I hear you're saying all this about me, but all I know and all that keeps coming back to me during my trials." during my situations, during my lack of passion, is I keep going back to this. I am His. Mm. I am my beloved's, and His desire is toward me. When I go through the night season, I've got to say, Devil, I know that I belong to my beloved, and His desire is toward me. She's not caught up in her inheritance in him, she's carried away with the fact that she belongs to him. And let me tell you something, if you ever see Jesus in a dream or any other way, the fact that he looks at you with love and passion is just overwhelming. A few weeks ago I saw Jesus and he hugged me and I have never felt such an encompassing love and, and genuine belonging as I did in that hug that he gave me. And the fact that she has all his attention is just overwhelming. This love for his own drive all the compromise out of our lives. Just the fact he loves us like this should make the compromise go. Mm. His deep burning desire, beloveds, is for you. This should deepen our response of abandonment in our heart that keep it toward him. We love him because he first loved us. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And this should empower us against all the accusation of the devil. Listen, others may steal your money. They may lie to you about your carpet. <laughs> they may take your rightful promotions at work. But we can boldly proclaim, you can have this world, the gold, the silver, and everything else that it has to offer. But one thing I know that stands beyond anything else, I am my beloved's, and his desire Hallelujah. is toward me. Yeah. Others may reject me, but I'm a lover of God. Mm. Jesus prayed that the love which the Father loved him would be in us. In John 17, 26. Of John, the book of John. Amen. She said, come my my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourisheth. Rather the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give me, thee my loves. What is she saying here? Huh? Yeah, yeah, to ministry. Amen. Yeah. Do you remember when she was asleep and he wanted her to minister to his friends? And what did she do? No. No. She didn't wake up. She didn't wake up. She didn't get up. And then what happened? She lost him. Mm -hmm. Remember that? No, she's right. She's right. Mm -hmm. She sees. Hallelujah. Through his eyes how valuable she is. And he has built her up through his love. And she says, now I'm ready. Come on. She's saying to him, come on. Wow. <laughs> she's saying to him, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Let's do it. Amen. Let's go to the fields. Okay. Let's go to the villages. Yeah. Let's let them know what it's like to be a bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. She's ready to go to work. He had promised to lay hold of the branches, and now it's fulfilled. Listen, when he takes hold of those boughs, when he takes hold and that 
promise comes to pass, it is power that is being released to you. Do you understand that when you are in his total possession, he's allowed to put his power in you and through you? He cannot pour that power until he totally owns you. Otherwise, that power would destroy you. As it destroys many. Many people reach heights in God where he pours out power because they've attained heights, but they don't have a full, he does not have a full hold on them. And what happens? They take glory to themselves or whatever. And they fall. And they fall. That's right. But when he lays hold of you, it's a promise of power that is now being released. She has interceded the promise that he said he would take hold of her. She has interceded it back to him. Say it with me. She has interceded it back to him until what? It comes to pass. That's what you do with the word of God. You say it back to him. You take his promises and you pray it back to him. Yes. This is no fight. This is the fight of faith. This is how the fight of faith goes. According, 1 Timothy says, according to the prophetic utterances mm. given to him. This is what you do. According to the prophetic promises that God has given, you lay hold of the promise and he lays hold of you. Yes, amen. I said, you lay hold of the promises and he lays hold of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She values the place of intercession for the release of his spirit before she actually goes to the field and the villages. This is one that has hit me really strong as I was studying this. Don't go to the villages until you've laid hold of him and he's laid hold of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's in that place that the greatest sacrifice may be required. And you better know that it's God leading you there. She values the the fact that she has to intercede for the release of his spirit before she can actually go into the field and villages. And then she says this, there will I give thee my loves. Where is it she's going to give her love to him? Again. In the field. In the field. Why? She is saying that in the field of labor, listen up, in the field of labor, in the place of selfless labor for others, where the risk of faith and persecution are unavoidable, she will prove her love. Even in the face of warfare, sacrifice, persecution, and conflicts. It is one thing to give him our love in the private with no distractions, but another thing to do it in the midst of the battle. Mm. It is in the tough battle that we prove our love. When we get our identity from our ministry function, we do not receive correction without defensiveness. We need to do our first works over. What is the mandrakes in Scripture? Does anyone know a famous reference for mandrakes, Rebecca? Yeah. And why did Rachel want them? Because they thought that mandrakes would help you have kids. Fertility. What does mandrakes stand for? Fertility. Fertility. The mandrakes give a smell. So what she's saying here is I am now fertile, able to have those fish pools of Heshbon full of fish. I am able now to be fruitful. I am able now, and it's... And People can smell the presence of God on her. It's used to increase fertility in women. I am ready to eat, she's saying, that which will make me fruitful that I might bear children. Right in front of her, also at her gates, is both seasoned truths in past experiences in God and new experiences out of God's deep and full treasury. Because she says here, in, right at my gate, right in front of me, right at my doorway, is revelation both new and old. When God breaks out, we can expect things from historic revivals and new breakthroughs as his power lays hold of the palm tree in a full way. We need both past, present, and future revelation to go into the thing that God is doing. Hallelujah. She said, I've laid this up for you, Lord. All these things that you've done to me, I have laid them up for you. She has laid up and stored treasures in heaven from her life of obedience and faith. She wanted to sacrifice and pain of warfare 
We're motivated by love for Him. Is, is, your, is your motivation love? Is what you're doing, is the warfare that you go through, mm. the toil, mm. Mm -hmm. the people that are making fun of you, tearing you down, can you continue in it? Because the love you have for Him is greater <clears throat> than what you're receiving in your sacrifice and pain of warfare. I tell you one thing, when all other motivations fail you, love for Jesus will keep your heart true. You know how the devil walks around you like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? You know that scripture? Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus has just done in the last chapter and a half? He has walked around her and not devalued her or looked to destroy her, mm -hmm. but he has appraised her. Mm -hmm. He has appraised her and he has found her worthy. I tell you, it might not mean much to you right now, but one day you will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And that appraisal in your favor is going to be all that matters at that moment. It's not going to be what you did, who you knew. Amen. It's going to be his appraisal. That's right. Are you bought and washed in the blood of the Lamb? At this point, she is so full. He has appraised her. She's ready. She's like a tiger. She's saying to Jesus, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to prove my love. I want to give you my love. And the, she says, oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. Mm -hmm. She is so in love with him, so overcome. She is so overcome here. She says, I want to show him my whole emotion. I don't want to be delayed. I don't want to be put up. She wants the pomegranate love to be displayed. 
and even in a sacrificial way. We were watching, again, I've watched it before, but we were watching the story of Jim Elliott and five young men that gave their, their lives in the jungles of Ecuador for the cause of Christ. It was a costly heart. They said, Lord, I am so in love with you. Show me where I can pour myself out. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Show me where I can pour myself out. Where I can pour my full love. Yeah. I want to show you how much it means to me, Lord, that you show me your praise of me. I want to go, Lord, and do what would prove my love that would cause fruitfulness to come from me. I don't want to leave this world mm. and not know that I have given and shown a passion for Christ. Amen. Being a martyr or otherwise, I don't want to live in this life passionless. I don't want to live in this life ordinary. Yes. I have I got to have this passion, this photograph. I've got to have it. I tell you, I'm going to die in one of it. Hallelujah. And if you don't feel that tonight, I don't know what else to tell you. Mm. But to be the bride of Jesus Christ means that he is your passion. That there's nothing else distracting and taking your attention. That you are so united in love with him that you wish you could display his passion. In front of the hardest sinner of the world. When we were in Germany, we were witnessing and Joy got out and did a dance right in the middle. Germans are the most reserved people that I've ever met. She got out there and did a dance of warfare. They didn't understand. I tell you what, something broke. And that's the kind of love we've got to have for Jesus that we're not embarrassed to display our passion when he called to be displayed. Jesus was displayed on the cross. He stood on that cross naked in front of everybody. Can we not sit in front of that apple tree and learn what he has displayed in front of the whole world to see? Have we lost the attraction of the old rugged cross? Have we lost the attraction of what he did for us? Does it no longer hold any fascination for us? What's wrong with us? I ask you tonight, what's wrong with us? God help us. God help us. We're barren wombs. We're not even feeling the barrenness of not having the children. We're too well fed and taking care of our distractions are everywhere. I'm asking you one thing tonight. Are you fulfilled? Are you fulfilled with the world? Does it fulfill you? No, it does not. And you know it doesn't. Why do you keep chasing it? Mm -hmm. Why do you keep going in the same circles expecting a different result? God desires a passion in us. And we should want to be this person that I've been talking about for 23 weeks. This is who we are supposed to be. And we don't care enough to even read it, study it, absorb it. Song of Solomon is displaying to you the picture of the bride that is going to be developed in this last hour. And if we don't begin to understand it, we're going to miss the picture. Yes. He's coming after a bride. Yes. And he's giving us a picture of what she looks like. Mm. If you don't desire to be her, <laughs> then I don't understand where you're coming from. Because when I laid it down, and I said I do to Jesus, I meant that this is all that I wanted in my life. And yes, I've chased other dreams and other visions. And I've chased other desires. But they always led me right back here. Yes. <laughs> Every pathway has ended right <coughs> back here. Because at the bottom of my life, after all I've gone through in my life, I realized that my only value is in his appraisal. That's the only value I have, is in his appraisal. 
I want to be what I was created to be. I'm going to end there tonight. You know where we need to go? We need to go to the house of the Holy Spirit and ask Him where we're missing the display of love. Where are we missing it? Instruct me, Holy Spirit, on how to show my bridegroom my love. Holy Spirit, instruct us. Instruct us. <clears throat> and that way I can show him all the love that's been in my heart. But I need that instruction. Father, we just go to you. Holy Spirit, we ask you, instruct us individually and corporately, oh God. Instruct us that we might come into fullness, that we might have a stature like the palm tree, Lord. That we might be straight and erect, that we might have the water both in humility down in the foot realm and in instruction in the head realm of doctrine and knowledge and understanding. God, let us be that full thing, God. God, let us see our nakedness, our barrenness. Lord, in the midst of thank you, we're rich and we have it all together. Show us, God, that really we are stripped bare as a church in the eyes of a world that's searching for truth. The church of Jesus Christ is shortchanging their examples. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to let, let us go back to your house of instruction. Let us go back that we might know how to go into the fields and the villages and find a harness in Jesus. Oh.